All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Randy Crabtree, who is currently in Sedona, Arizona. How are you doing, Randy? I'm doing great. I'm enjoying being in Arizona and I'm enjoying being here talking with you. Excellent. And Randy is the co-founder and partner of Trimerit Specialty Tax Professionals, a widely followed author, lecturer and podcast host for the accounting profession. But what we're actually going to talk about today is how to find your true fit in, in your business and then surrounding yourself with people who have the skills and passions that you do not have yourself. So really, I guess at the end of the day, Randy, what we're talking about is that old chestnut about self-awareness which everybody, you know, you talk to anybody and, and you talk about self-awareness and everybody says, yes, this is really important, but very few people are self-aware. Yep. Yep. For sure. And, and honestly, you know, I'm old, I'll be 60 this year. It took me a long time to get to that point where I, where I really realized what my true passions were, where my true skill set was. And, and then that partly is just being honest with yourself and, and accepting that. And, and it really, you know, if I would have done it 30 years ago, who knows what it'd be today, but I'm enjoying the way it is today. Yeah. So what was the process that you went through yourself in figuring out, actually, hang on, this isn't what I'm good at, but this is what I'm really good at and what I'm passionate about and what I want to do. And then the second part of that question is then how do you go about bringing in people to fill in the other parts? Because that's often a hard handoff for people because you you've been doing it yourself. You do it a particular way. You bring in somebody with the skill sets, but they mightn't do it the way you want. Yeah, it, it that that is definitely a very big learning curve or, or just self awareness curve, I guess is the, the way to look at it to, to get to that point. Let me go on the, the first question first. How did I personally get to this point? And then if yeah. anybody can take anything from that, great. Probably nobody's going to take anything exactly the way I did because mine really started um, eight years ago uh, when I had a stroke. Um, and uh, very fortunate to, to fully recover from that stroke. But after that stroke, you, you, you look at things differently. You know, I, uh, I uh, you know, I kind of started looking at myself more introspectively, you know, if I'm doing one of this, I'm doing here, I love the business I was doing and, and Trimerit is our business and we do specialty tax and we consult with CPA firms and we help them get, you know, tax savings for their clients. And I, and I love tax. Um, I always have. It's just something I, I enjoyed. Um, but we started this firm and now it's 15 years ago. So at the time it was we were halfway into the life of our business. And I was managing partner by default, I guess, right. from the start. I was in public accounting prior to that. We started this firm, two of us, Andy Lane, who's an engineer, myself, who's a CPA. And and by default, I just kind of uh, took over that position. Um, just made sense coming out of the public accounting in my mind. Well, you know, looking at this and doing this self-evaluation, I realized, you know, I'm really not good at that aspect of it. I don't like managing the business. I, I, I honestly looked at, and it took me the longest time to look at that, but I looked at it and I go, okay, you know what I really like, and I've done this from day one with this business, is education. I go out and I educate CPAs on on different aspects of the tax code, very specialized area. I enjoy it, uh, 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 trying to be as humble as I can. I'm really good at it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and so um, that just uh, looked at that and I go, really, I should really concentrate myself, my, my time on there. Now this wasn't immediate. It wasn't right, just, hey, sure. light goes off and now it's changed. I actually fought changing that managing role position internally and really with my partner for a while you know it, it wasn't i had a stroke and okay now i'm changing things it was it was about you know three year time period where that transition but i just started looking at things different and finally you know he just begged <laughs> which i wish he would have begged harder uh hey let me take over that role and and it made sense so 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 partly is looking at yourself, finding your passions, my passions, education. I do that all the time. I've already done one webinar today. I did two yesterday. I've got another one on Friday this week. And so, so looking at that and finding that. And in addition, I write articles on the taxes. I do the podcast. I do all these things, but then, you know, I can go deeper into that, but then the transition into, you know, uh, or surrounding yourself with people that have the strong skill sets yep. that uh, you don't have. Well, my partner, who is the managing partner of the firm now, 
is so much better at that than I was. And I, w I should have identified that sooner. But, but in this transition, when we've gone from roles changing, I think we, I think our revenue is up about 800 times in the last wow. five years. So we've wow. just grown tremendously. And, you know, we could say partly it's, it's me being out in front of people. And, and I think we could say partly it's him uh, managing. And I think it's probably honestly more him managing the firm, um, but freeing me up too. So, yeah. so that was one thing. That was just weird. He had it identified that. But when you're starting the just, business. Just let me, yeah. Yeah, just I'm let sorry, me, John. Just, I'll go on forever. So it's your turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No worries. No worries. No, I, I just wanted to come back on a couple of things you said. Yeah. First of all, first of all, you said something on a, that's never been said on this podcast in nearly a thousand podcasts. And that's, I love tax. So I just. To... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, the, the, the other part, the other part, uh, the other part, Randy, is interesting is uh, the point is. If you think about how we approach work generally and how we approach employees just traditionally, uh, you know, we do once a year uh, reviews uh, you know, and uh, performance reviews and all of that. And what do we do with those performance reviews? We tell you, hey, Randy, well done on this. You did great on that. Now, here's 52 things that we want you to improve upon. And we always have the focus in the wrong place. We're always trying to improve upon right. people things that they're not good at or they don't like. Oh, no, you are completely right. And it's funny. I was just talking with somebody about this a, a day or two ago that that it's really in fact, it was somebody's LinkedIn post that I, I follow and he had put something out like that. That is just, you know, accentuate and, 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 and identify the positives and concentrate on those because that's where that person's strength is, which is really what I should have done, you know, looking at that strength and, and just continued with that. So, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. So going on then, you were saying um, about finding the finding the right people. I mean, you're lucky you had your partner there already, but it's yes. when, you move, when you move beyond that to bringing the dreaded strangers into the company with their new ideas and their own ways of doing things. Yep. It, it's not. So there's a, two ways to look at this. One, there's just the startup business that has to, you know, they got some person and starting a business because they have a passion about whatever it is. They have a, a passion about, you know, the restaurant business and supporting the restaurant business or running a restaurant, but they don't have a passion about bookkeeping. They don't have a passion about marketing. They don't have a passion about all the other aspects of the business that you need to, to be good at it. So, so from one aspect, when you're starting up, you just have to find a way and you just have to, when you're setting up your, your market, your business plan is, I know these things I'm not good at, and I'm going to need to find an outsource. You can outsource marketing. You can outsource uh, uh, bookkeeping. You can outsource even HR. You can outsource all these things. It costs money. You have to plan for it. But it's extremely important things that you need to do. And as you grow, you can bring that in house. So, so one thing is that when I talk to people who are starting up their businesses, you know, spend your time on that passion. That's why you started that business. It's that passion that you have. And that's going to show through when you can concentrate as much of your time on that. Fill in where you can with these other things. And then as you grow, finding the right people. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit um, probably, I don't know if the word's biased. I, I always think we've got the right person. And honestly, we don't have turnover. I always felt like and I don't know how we get so lucky and I don't know how we, this ha happens, but we always are able to find good people. And I think partly it's in our industry, either people, a lot of our employees are engineers. And so mm -hmm. a lot of our engineers in general, my, my uh, partner told me engineers want to do engineering, but get out of engineering. So we allow them to continue to do, because we do technical things that are basically right. tax related to engineering. And so they get to stay engineers, but do something different. So it's just right. a unique. So from, from that standpoint, we're very fortunate or someone who's in accounting and wants to continue, but wants to be a more of a niche practice, which I'm huge on niches. I think if you can find that niche and that goes back to your passion, that's huge. So we've been able to find those people. So I'm, I'm a little bit lucky on that standpoint. Yeah, it's interesting uh, what you just said there. There's a couple of things I just wanted to pick up on. Uh, you know, number one is, yeah, outsourcing is fantastic now. You can outsource anything. Uh, you know, you can find contractors on Upwork. You can find outsource 
you know, outsource your HR, all of that stuff. I think we're in a unique position now for building the kind of hybrid companies of the future where you have a core set of employees, then maybe you have an, maybe you outsource HR to some company, whatever. Then you have maybe contractors who come in for short uh, projects. You have other ones who may work with you for a long time. They're almost like employees, except they're not. And I think that's the challenge for leaders and organizations is how to make a hybrid organization seamless. Yeah, I think that's that, that's important because what you said, I mean, everything, I mean, the last two years has taught us. I mean, you, you, we don't have to hire the person that lives in our, our town. We don't have to, we don't even have to hire the person that can be a contractor and it can be a contractor. I mean, I have a CPA that I work with who has been virtual since he started his business 10 years ago, but he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's in Chicago and he hires people all over the world. His, his employees are all over the world. And that's such a unique situation we are in right now that we've learned we could do this. He learned it a while ago, but the week we learned we can do it. And then, like you said, not even just employees. I mean, the contractors, you know, with the, the I, you know, I don't know if I like this term, but the great resignation, I mean, people are looking to do new things. And so, you know, there are people that, you know, when they quit their job, they're still looking to do something that may just be a different way of doing it. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think there should be some type, some words should be, phrases should be banned. New normal should be never <laughs> mentioned ever again by anybody. <laughs> I hear. <laughs> well, hopefully I didn't say that yet today. I don't no, think no, I, you didn't. I don't. You didn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the other part then, Dan Randy, is so when you do bring these people in, right, um, as we said, as I said earlier, part of the, part of the challenge is to where you have to kind of focus on the results of what they do not always the process by which they do it because that's the part i often see where it gets very frustrating like the person who brought them in and gave them the responsibilities wants to jump in and keep kind of showing them to do it this way and that way instead of saying okay if i've hired the right person if i've given them the right tools uh now i need to be now i need to judge them on their progress and results as opposed to trying to get them to be a, a mirror image of myself yep yeah, and that, that that's something I learned over the years too, that I was probably slow at doing it, but we have we're completely that way now. We are we do not micromanage in any way uh, with our employees. You you get your work done, you know what you have to do. If you need help, you let us know you need help. If if you want to work from midnight till eight AM, go ahead, work midnight to eight AM. If you want to take the next month off, we have unlimited PTO. You take as much time off as you want, whenever you want, you know what you have to get done. And, and, and get it done, but we're always there to support you. And that's one of the roles that I changed to when I did this whole transition is, you know, we have a business development team of, I don't even know at this point, 10, 12, 15 people. Oh, actually we had a business development call on Monday morning and there was 18 people on the call. And, mm -hmm. and I tell them all, I'm available for you anytime you have a, a client you want me to talk to, you have a prospect you want me to talk to, you want me to do some webinars, you want me to do some education, you want me to just hold your hand through a call, we'll do it, but we're there, but we're not gonna micromanage. That's yours and, and you know what you need to do and, and you let us know when you need help. So yeah, extremely important. Yeah, and I think it's really important to that point about micromanagement because I think even for those who are predisposed towards being micromanagers, I think things are moving at a rapid pace to the point where you can't be a micromanager in every area because you are not going to know everything because no. things there's so many things have gotten so complicated, so specialized, niche, yep. et cetera, that, that you're just wasting your time. Yep. And that's that kind of translates into our business. We we are a niche business with specialty tax, but we're actually niches within our niche. There's six specialty tax items we deal with and our people don't really cross over from one niche to the other because the, it, you need to be such a strong specialist in your area to really get the recognition out there in the industry that the, hey that's the go-to company for a b c d one two three x y z whatever it is and yep yeah, i completely agree yeah and then uh, just just finally then as as you transitioned to this new role and you, your partner was doing the other things, you know, you brought in people. What did, what, um, from your own personal satisfaction and results and, and Pat, did you feel like it was almost like a new release of life in the business? Yeah. And, and honestly, it, yes. Oh, for sure. A new release. It took me a year probably of getting my mind around the whole 
that's not my job anymore, which is, I had the luxury of taking a year. It shouldn't have taken that long. Um, but, uh, but, uh, it, it took, but, but yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, if you asked me five years ago, how long I was going to work, I, you know, I would have said, you know, it was probably three years max. Um, now we're five years into that and I don't see ever stopping. So it's just re-energized everything that I do. Yeah, no, that's, that's fantastic. I think that really underlines, uh, what happens when you find number one, what your passion is, but number two, you know, what you're good at and you focus in on that. Uh, the I think that's where you know the whole energy comes alive. So we, as we said earlier, we have to get away from trying to fix people mm -hmm. and trying to fix the things that they can't do, and instead go, they're really good at this. I need to figure out how I can maximize that. Yeah, and I'm not, and I should read more business books. I know there's one, and I can't think of the author, but part of the concept is you know right person, wrong seat. And, and uh, I interviewed a managing partner on my podcast and he was talking about that. And man, that just, it was such an interesting conversation to have with him and how, hey, they bring in new people just because they didn't thrive in the role we brought them in for. We found out they had other skills and we transitioned them to this place that those skills could be used. I think that, especially now with everybody having a hard time finding employees, you get a good person, you figure out what their skills are and that's where you let them thrive. Yeah, that's a, I think that's an excellent point because yeah, people are, are struggling uh, right now with finding good people. But I think if more companies did focus on like, let's figure out what the strengths of this person are uh, yep. and get away from this idea of, of generalists, uh, because I think you know, that's what that's what in the past was, oh, there's something that needs doing, hire somebody for that. There's somebody yep. who's going to hire somebody from that. And it was all about adding people as opposed right. to, you know, being smart about it. Yep. Nope. Yep. I agree completely. You and I are on the same page. We need to yeah, hang out more. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Well, you know, I'm happy to head down to Sedona. <laughs> Although I'm a, I can't complain. I am in San Diego. I was going to say San Diego's pretty good. I'll be in yeah. California in two weeks. We're going to spend about five weeks out in California. We're kind of doing a remote work thing. And uh, um, so I'm looking forward to, to that as well. Yeah, it is a little chilly right now, but hey. You know, <laughs> yeah, what, 65 <laughs> or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, did, unfortunately, my wife's a California girl, and, uh, you know, it drops below 74. She thinks she's in Chicago in the winter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't think it ever, I didn't think, I thought it was always 74 in San Diego, <laughs> like nonstop 74. So. Yeah, so, well, we have our days. Um, All right. But yeah, overall. But listen, Randy, this has been fantastic. All of Randy's information is going to be below this uh, video, so you can reach out to him. But before we go, Randy, just a quick uh, summary of, of what your company does. Yeah, so Trimerit is the company, um, and you can look us up at our website, try-merit.com. We are a specialized tax group. We do six different things, R&D tax credit, cost segregation, energy incentives, employee uh, incentives, uh, uh, tax credits based on employee hiring and re rent engine and all that. So it's just a very, very niche, unique, specialized area of the tax code, which I love. <laughs> so that, <laughs> I told you twice now. <laughs> told me twice. Absolutely. I think that will be a record that will go unbroken. Um, and the other thing, too, is don't forget, uh, Randy has the podcast by Weekly, the Unique CPA. So I would encourage you to listen into that if you're interested in this area, because clearly, as you can see from this, Randy has not just the knowledge, but the passion for it, too. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Randy. Uh, thank you all for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again really soon.